Okay, so this is Dr. Nicole Lobry de Bruyne. And uh, Nicole's a vet behaviourist here in Perth and I was just going to, she's uh, given me some of her time, uh, which has been fantastic, and we're going to talk about medication in dogs for behaviour issues. So one of the things that was asked a few weeks ago when I was presenting or last weekend was uh, where um, I would recommend um, people go to vet behaviourist. Um, so I think that at home in the UK, it seems to be that we are more down the line of it's more a last resort, whereas in the States, it seems to be very much they'll medicate early on. And I think from speaking to you guys this year and last year, I think you probably follow more of the American model. So it's just a, your thoughts mm. on when you would do it and why you would do it. So, I mean, the kind of set of clients I will see usually come from a really good base of trainers, right? Okay. So these trainers may have been working with a dog for a period of time and then not making the progress that they would see in a normal, normal dog. dog. Yeah. So so if we've got an, a normal dog, it, it should be it should have a brain that is able to kind of change with the appropriate training. Yeah. Right? Whereas if you've got an anxious dog, your brain may not be in the, in the right state to actually take on that training. So even though the training might be good, we're not making the progress we want. So in those dogs, when uh, a trainer says to me, um, can you have a look at this dog? I will then collect a really long history. So they'll have a 20 page, say, um, behavior questionnaire. And what that then allows me to see is the red flags in the dog's history. Okay that suggests to me that there's more going on here than, than you know, poor training. Yeah. So there'll be, there'll be the red flags of the early history um, that might even include, um, you know, maternal stress or, you know, where the dog was from or how the dog presented as a puppy. Okay. So especially when we see... Um, those early red flags of uh, fearful in puppy class. Okay. Failed to make, you know, over four sessions, uh, you know, come out from under the chair. Right, okay. Then that would suggest to me that that dog's got all the genetic predisposition for fearfulness. Okay. And then, um, say they, they usually, if they come to see me, it's more that they'll be one and a half or two years of age maybe. But the history is going to have all that background yeah. that, that I go, okay, that makes sense. But why we're seeing them at one and a half or so is because that's when the brain starts pruning itself. Okay. And what of, do you mean by that? So, so, so say in the, in the young animal and in humans, the same, it's busy making lots of connections, okay. right? And spreading you know, lots of neurons going everywhere, making lots of new dendrites. And then at the start of social maturity, which in dogs is somewhere between 12 and 18 months, depending okay. on the breed, yeah. through to, say, three to four years of age, that's the end of it. Yeah. So over that period of time, the brain starts saying, okay, not using these bits, not using these okay. bits, and starts pulling back, right? And if you're an anxious dog, those bits that are keeping you safe, right? They're really valuable brain. Okay. Yeah. So actually what we see is that dogs that are anxious are becoming more, more and anxious. more so over because that period. Those the the neurons that have been firing have been using or activating behaviors which have been keeping the dog safe. Mm. So they're mm. those connections mm. are getting stronger and stronger. Mm. So actually what I say to people Good work, bad work, or no work, yeah. your dog is going to get worse over that period of time. Okay. So, you know, people are often waiting for the dog to grow out of it yeah. or to mature. But what we see with the anxious dogs is those dogs are actually growing into it yeah. and they're actually getting worse. So then at, at that age, if we can give those brains more serotonin, yeah. That's one of the, the very first things that we'll contemplate doing because that is the neurotransmitter that is largely in those serotonergic pathways, which are the pathways that go from reactive brain, from amygdala, yeah. to frontal cortex. Yeah. 
which is the so, thoughtful part. Yeah. yeah. So that's the part of the brain that says, hmm, see that dog over there? Ah, oh, no, I can just not look at that dog. Yeah. Um, so it's your thinking, it's controlling your impulses, right? So if we want that part of those connections to be a super highway yeah. instead of a dirty little track, yeah. right? Then we want lots of serotonin. Okay. Okay. So what if we so if we if we load these dogs with an SSRI, yeah. I'm actually not going to um, expect that that dog won't still have events. Yeah. Right? It could still have uh, breakthrough events. It could still bite someone. It could still bite another dog. It could still do many of its behaviours that we're trying to change. But what we see is that we have a dog that recovers better. Yeah, okay. That um, in general is needs more of its trigger in its face to get to that yeah. level. Okay. And it makes better... Um, advances with its training okay so when a dog sees me um, I'm going to talk to a client about the management the modification and the medication okay um, the management of course is how to avoid the triggers in the first place yeah. because we want to avoid the practice and rehearsal of the behavior that we don't want yeah so and sometimes for some people that's all they're gonna do yeah right? yeah and that's gonna be enough right um, so that would just be if the dog kicks off at another dog hmm. at 10 metres, just yeah. don't go within 10 metres yeah. of another dog. Yeah. 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 You know, and if it's a highly risky behaviour, such as I don't do well around children, well, then we're going to, you know, definitely use management yeah. because the modification aspect of it may actually be too dangerous to do. Yeah. So yeah. Who, whose child are you going to use, you yeah. know, as your training tool? Um but if it's something that we absolutely have to live with, then we are going to have to modify. Um, and that's where then working with, you know, a good trainer like you or someone else yeah. would come in and they would devise that plan. Yeah. Um, but, but having the use of the medication as the, the third piece of the puzzle, yeah. if you like, just helps will just on. allow those dogs yeah. to make a better progress. So I would never say that these dogs don't need training or that they don't need behaviour modification. Um, so, yeah, I just... That, uh, that makes the best kind of use of, I guess, the veterinary medicine yeah, okay. model. Um, and then some of them... So some... I guess I was saying this to Laura as well today. You know, there are some dogs... Say if you've had... Uh, a serious bite event or you've bitten humans um, then I think it makes sense to go okay let's do everything we can for this dog as quickly yeah, as okay. we can to yeah. make this dog safe yeah so in some instances you might get to the same place as me without mo without medication yeah. right Just but take it longer but it would take you longer yeah. I imagine okay um, and in and therefore, there's some circumstances that that wouldn't maybe the best choice to take yeah. it longer, right? Yeah. Because we've got a child that's at danger, or we've got two you know, people. Yeah. Two seconds. You're all right. So I'm going to walk through with a dog on okay. my side. So if you can pop them. Yep. We're going. Dogs are away. Sorry. It's okay. You're all right. Okay. Bring through. We're going to look out here for a little bit. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, come on over. Yeah, so it's where you're needing the quickest, most effective, and most positive and humane result mm. that you yeah. can provide. Yeah, I guess, you know, and certainly where, where I come from, it's often a welfare issue yeah. as well. So um, if you're in... A state of self-protection yeah. you know like if you feel so bad that you have to aggress towards you know everything is a home invasion for yeah. you yeah. then that's a terrible mental state to yeah, be okay. living in right yeah. so if that dog needs uh, medication to actually live calmer 
then that would be a good thing. And, and so on your yeah. So 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 if the SSRI, for instance, is doing your baseline work, protecting your brain from stress, mm-hmm. it's going to take the six to eight weeks to start to make the architectural changes that we're after, right? Okay. Because even though we boost serotonin immediately, it does. It's not just about that. Yeah. So it's not just about having more serotonin in the synapses. It's actually about making those architectural changes. So, so the brain is physically changing. Yeah. So that actually does take time. Okay. So in that interim, we may use intermittent use meds on occasion, to, which work differently, and yeah. they'll be things like. For instance, we might use um, a med called clonidine, which is an alpha-2 agonist. And what that does is it dials down flight and fight response. Okay. So when you when you have a moment where you go, <gasps> like, <Yeah. laughs> like these dogs do, yeah. and their, their hackles go up and they're barking and their pupils are dilated, they're in, you know, yeah. fear of their life, yeah. right? equivalent to someone who's having a post-traumatic stress anxiety attack right um and one of the meds that's used in humans for that is clonidine okay so it stops the physiological feeling of panic okay and when you dial that down in a dog and in a human what it allows the animal to do is actually breathe and go Hmm. So okay. for to able to physically scary. breathe as well, yeah. actually, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I have, for instance, uh, clients who have your classic um, dog reactive dog, right? Who, who they they are doing the behaviour mod for. It's on the SSRI, but they still have a lot of um, whoa, 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 at the trigger. Yeah. But if they take some clonidine an hour before the walk. They don't have that. Okay. And so then that can allow them to do their training more effectively under the influence of, of a med and okay. therefore the training again progresses more quickly. Okay. And that and, and the dog retains that, away. that knowledge as well. Yeah. So this doesn't have a memory erasure effect. Okay. So there are some intermittent use meds that we would use that have a memory erasure effect. Yeah. And we would choose those for those phobic dogs okay. who need to live through uh, a storm yeah. or a firework Fireworks. event or something that we know that they really don't want to be remembering. Yeah, okay. So that would, again, be a different med and that we wouldn't train... Generally, we wouldn't train under that med okay. because we suspect that it doesn't... You don't retain yeah, everything. Okay. Yeah. And then... There are there are other adjunct meds that we will use as well. So it, it you know it will depend on on again how the dog presents and and what what its behaviour looks like when it's faced with its trigger as to what we would choose. Um, and just like it is with humans with an SSRI, not everybody is going to agree with. Yeah. with that med on themselves yeah. like if it makes the animal feel crap yeah then i'm going to stop it and how would you know that that's what the effect it was having it's real obvious you right, know okay. the owner goes i don't like the look of him yeah okay you know he's either too lethargic or he's gone off his food yeah okay um and those things are obvious so there, take... there are things they can actually look really bad yeah right and that's i'm more reactive to my triggers yeah okay. i'm agitated i'm noise sensitive and and their adverse reactions yeah, that okay. we would we would stop the med immediately as opposed to side effects yeah yeah okay. yeah so the very mild side effect you would expect to wear off yeah and i'm very conservative when i start a med that i that i start it low and i work up and i don't really go very high ever anyway yeah. um because i i you know, I, I, you know, it's not my aim to have a dopey dog yeah. or have the client not happy. And is that the do you think that's the reluctance when people? Because the mm. what I get is people say, "I don't mm. want my dog to be a zombie." Mm. Is that okay. where that oh, comes well, of from? Of course, and and the I don't want my dog to be a zombie is a common um, problem that people will think is going to happen with meds, but I never see it. 
Yeah, okay. You know, if it's used correctly, your dog shouldn't be a zombie. Yeah. Um, some of the older style drugs that were used, which are the tricyclic, antidepressants okay. they affect more neurotransmitters than serotonin okay and they can have more side effects of sedation but we generally don't use those okay and so you know and in some instances there might be times where you would want that right? yeah but but uh in general we don't choose to use okay. those that often so again if someone was unhappy say if their dog was on an ssri and they were unhappy about the way their dog was then they, they definitely should be talking to their vet about changing that because they it, sh, it should never look worse. Yeah. It and should always look better. There's different types of SSRIs as yeah. well, so there's yeah, different yeah. drugs that agree with different individuals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just like with people and, and many of the clients that I might have have had their own experience with their own mental illness and they've, they've themselves been on more than one, right? Yeah. And they know that... You know, sometimes it takes a little while yeah. to find the right one. It it is difficult for clients if they've if their dog has had one and they didn't like they didn't like what they saw. It is difficult sometimes to convince them to try a second else. one. But I, for instance, I had I've had one client who um, the first SSRI was very negative. Mm-hmm. It made the dog worse, and. After making the dog worse, she didn't think it came back to how it was okay. before. Yeah. So that was disturbing, right? And but it may be coinciding with the fact that the dog is getting worse anyway, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. But she was very reluctant to go on a second one, and so for a long time we 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 didn't. We just had the dog on adjuncts, okay. right? Which which are only really working when they're on board yeah so i was very very keen to get her to try another one and i would every time i saw her i'd say are you ready to try another one and she wasn't and so you know it wasn't making great progress but then after about six months of nothing she did go okay i'll try another one okay and we did, and the dog has made incredible yeah. um, success. I mean, it's still a very, very <laughs> fearful and yeah. abnormal dog, right? But as far as she's concerned, the 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 um, ability of the dog to to recover now is yeah. so much better yeah. than before. Okay. And so, you know, I uh, I don't know you know, client-wise, hundreds and hundreds of clients, and I don't put them all on meds, but I probably put a fair proportion of them on meds. So I, I'm i in a good position to know, I suppose, you know, the positive mm-hmm. effects of it. But having said that, these are... So when you're saying there's a fair proportion of your clients that are mm. on meds, these are people that come for you for behavioural work. Oh, yeah, so yeah, So it's yeah, not yeah. that you're just... Oh, like, no. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. No, no, so I only yeah. do behavioural work. Yeah. And I, this is, I think, we were talking about this... Uh, with the other trainers before as well. I mean, the problem for a, a general practitioner vet um, putting an animal like this on, uh, an animal that they see in general practice on meds, would be that they're probably not, um, they're not making the same level of diagnosis that we are making because we spend a long time yeah. with the client, we yeah. have a huge amount of history, we have a huge amount of uh, behavior history and trainer input before we decide yeah. and then we keep very good track of the dog yeah. Yeah. whereas if if your veterinarian not saying that this happens in all cases but if your general veterinarian puts your dog on meds he he or she may not have uh, even been able to in the period of time that you've been speaking to that vet even be able to describe how the yeah. medic medication is going to work so people um may do a lot of things incorrectly they may not use the med long enough they may not use it consistently they may stop um without weaning if they've been on it okay you know really you can stop without weaning if you've been on it less than six weeks right easy but 
But if we've been on it years, and I've got lots of clients who after, say, one or two years on the med, we want to go, okay, we've reached social maturity. Our brain is pretty stable now. Yeah. You're in a position where you're happy with your dog is, how your dog is. Let's see. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Let's, let's go off. Yeah. And then we wean really slowly because... Again, like it takes six to eight weeks to make the brain changes that we're after, it's going to do the same to undo them if it's going to undo them. Okay. If the training isn't there, yeah. yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the so, drugs kind of like almost like a scaffolding, which is supporting supporting the behavior, and you want to see if the behavior's intact yeah. when you remove the, yeah. the drugs. Yeah. So what sometimes happens is that so say so we're so if we're taking the dog off the med because we want to see if we can yeah we're going to wean really slowly so we're going to drop by 25 percent okay and we're going to do that for a couple of months at least yeah. and and they might get to the end of that six to eight week period and go yeah he he needs it yeah but if they if they were weaning quickly they wouldn't know that so, because they would wean too quickly and then he'd be off. And if you're off, you can't use that same med again often. Okay. The second right. time. Okay. So this, that's the why. And then science doesn't really understand why that is. Yeah. But, yeah. So if your med is working well the first time, when you come off it, you come off it as slowly as you can because of that factor so see that that two month period you reduce it by 25 percent mm. for the two months that's mm. effectively the same two month period as it take to build up mm. you give them that two months mm. see how they mm. are mm. and then and then you may be able to go down again yeah and and so say say you successfully went down by 25 percent and you and they were like yeah it's great it's still the same yeah same dog yeah. good okay let's go down the next 25 yeah. percent sometimes it means that we have to start getting medications compounded and things like that because it starts to get hard to decrease by 25% okay. for some meds that are really small tablets yeah. anyway. Yeah. But anyway, we'll do that because then on the next level, we go, we, they might go, okay, now I'm seeing something. Yeah. Which is, is again, okay. It just means, okay, we're going to maintain on a lower dose for, for, longer. for, for now. Yeah. And so it allows people to actually feel like they are reducing, they're finding the least effective, the least, that they can give the dog the least effective dose that yeah. it needs, right? Without feeling like they're overusing. Or so whatever. the most effective, lowest dose. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, it's yeah. Late in the, the day. least effective dose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the most effective, lowest Lower dose. dose. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Right. So that can happen. And that's good. A few people, yeah, and. And so, really, I say a few people I've started very, very young, right? Like at the end of puppy school. Okay. They're abnormal. They've got all the genetic markers that say they're going to be abnormal. Yeah. Um, they're, they're really unwell, fearful dogs, right? And you say they're abnormal. So when you were saying earlier on, the dog hasn't come out from underneath the chair for four weeks. Mm hmm and when it does it might be growling and yeah. and using strategies that we really yeah. don't want it to use whereas a fearful dog within a normal range might take a couple of weeks to come out mm. and then be mm. yeah but, but get there yeah or maybe get, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah okay um so so if we start dogs say really super early like that um we've hardly ever seen them off mend right yeah yeah because they they started it puppy school yeah and um in my mind that's a good thing right because we're we're actually giving that growing brain and the, the brain while oh, it's okay. making it as, as yeah. all of the you know we're really actually being able to these are the ones that you really hope you'll be able to get yeah. off right but I probably wouldn't try taking those dogs off till the end of social maturity. Which is between that three, that three to four. Three to four. Right, okay. Um, but what I, what I don't like seeing, and I see it a lot, of course, is the dogs that are coming to me at the end of social maturity. So they're three or four. Yeah. The brain's done a lot of its pruning. And, and, and it's also three and four 
three and four means it's done a lot of practice of the behaviour. Yeah. It's using a lot of strategies that work well for it. Um, and and those dogs may be on meds for much longer. Yeah, okay. Because, uh, yeah. So my, my thoughts with that before mm. speaking to you would have been mm. that if we're putting a dog on meds at 16 weeks uh, or 12, 16 mm. weeks, my immediate thought would have been, where's the data to suggest, to show that we've implemented a training program and it's not mm. worked? But you're mm. saying that it's the, it's the ones mm. that are pretty glaringly obvious, mm. this dog's mm. not normal. Mm. Or, so a classic case of mine that comes to mind, right, is a dog that um, comes, is, is bred way out, whoop, whoop. Um, so, so what does that mean for those that are not from here? <laughs> way out, whoop, whoop means... So, the boonies. So, yeah, so very different from the, the, the life it ended up with. Ah, okay. It was urban, yeah. right? So say it's geographically far away, no real great socialisation yeah, experiences. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from a from a two puppy a two puppy litter yeah so only one sibling um, and and its parent dogs was the only yeah dog yeah. interactions had and the couple breeding it comes down to Perth at, at the end of socialization so own, new owners have very little to do with 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 what it's been exposed to then it's then it's gone from there to uh, they just bombarded it with socialization yeah, okay. when it was fearful yeah and created a kind of phobic yeah, okay. scenario yeah. so you know they like most people had heard that socialization is a good thing yeah and yeah but hadn't seen that the dog was really fearful so that dog um, has has had to ha- have you know it was seen in puppy classes over over weeks not progressing Mm -hmm. and then the trainer um going to the home and not progressing um so that dog started on the ssri i mean uh it we don't know really do we because we can't we don't know what that dog would look like without it yeah but it it's still not great, right? Yeah, yeah. With the SSRI, yeah. but I think it would be significant worse, worse yeah. if it hadn't had that, right? So see, with, with that, it's there's so we get individuals, individual humans that have got learning disabilities mm-hmm. that have got mm-hmm. brains which haven't mm-hmm. formed properly, mm-hmm. and it's the same with dogs, mm. exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. I guess I get my um, my my evidence from from Karen Overall's okay. book um, and she she is very you know very adamant on on the use of meds early yeah. um, so I guess I get that from her and I, I guess I see it as a welfare thing if, if we can do something that we know protects the brain from stress and therefore you see, with when you don't have enough serotonin, what you don't um, have is the ability to absorb the cortisol, and the cortisol okay. is what damages your hippocampus, which is where your your associational learning happens, yeah. and that's why these dogs can't sit and they can't do the okay. things that you want them to do when you're asking them when they because that that learning learning and memory yeah. um, like like functional associational memory is really damaged yeah. by all of those um, stress events. So cortisol, stress hormone, um, is, yeah. that, is a direct result of, an, of adrenaline or does it happen separately? No, it, well, so it forget- would happen, It would. they would both be happening in concert, I suppose, but it's the cortisol that is, that is the damaging right. thing. And so basically, the, so I know that from, so if, we were, if we're sitting in a, higher physiologically in a higher state of cortisol than normal mm-hmm. that then when you're saying it's a welfare issue mm. it's not only just for our behavior it has it damages our body doesn't it oh yeah yeah, yeah so yeah, heart, yeah. Lungs, yeah yeah you know yeah so so i i don't know where where who did it say, who said that that line uh, at having a cortisol holiday someone yeah. said that. yeah uh, i don't know who said it but you know that's what 
what that's often what's happening when we do good management as well, isn't yeah. it? You know, okay. we're taking cortisol holiday then yeah. when we're actually stopping the exposure yeah. of the dog to the thing. So it allows us to go back to mm. a kind of yeah. base level yeah. or normal levels. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, you know, the reality is is that these dogs even if you do really good management and and um, the reality is that some of these dogs think that you know something dropping off the counter is 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 a like reason thing. to be you yeah. know, worried yeah. so so these you know I guess you see it in those dogs this is, I've said this to the trainers before you know like in my room that I um, consult from obviously I see the same behavior yeah. over and over again and I know now what a normal dog will do and an abnormal yeah. okay. dog will do to the same yeah. uh, things and the abnormal dogs will startle at the bin yeah. and they will startle at the noise of the paper towel yeah. and they will you know like all of these things seem really really threatening to yeah. them but when I see startle like that I know that that amygdala that threat processing yeah. center right is really dialed up so if that is firing all the time, then that is damaging learning and memory. Yeah, of course. So that's why, you know, it makes perfect sense to actually go, let's give you something to help you with that. So as trainers, um, so there's a number of points. We could sit talking about this mm. all night. Yeah, right? yeah. So, we could. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, the, so there's a number of things. As, as a trainer, um, if, I'm, if I won... I'm going to ask you what, what I need to look for. Mm. And then two, if I'm not aware of this and just see the behaviour has been the problem, then we could, not me, mm. but other trainers start resol resolve, resolving to more punitive methods in order mm. to try and stop that, mm. which is mm. possibly then going to add more stress mm. and more mm. cortisol. Of mm. mm. course, yeah. So what would I be looking for? So, I mean, I know when mm. you're describing... Mm. But if we're just starting out, trainers are just starting mm, out looking at okay. this. What what is it that what are the behaviours that they're, they're looking for that would be warning signs? Mm. So I mean, I I guess you know that it is interesting, isn't it? Because that I guess a lot of the things that people consider behaviour problems have an element of normality to yeah. them right yeah. they'll you know there could be digging there could be barking there could be um, aggression there could be all those things and they're in it in the right context they can all be normal right yeah. so I guess I look at frequency intensity and duration okay they're my big things yeah so um, you know if a dog for instance every time people come over it feels like a home invasion yeah and that is abnormal and yeah. that is an abnormal brain and what that would we see there also um well it could it, it might it might not always be an aggressive response it might actually be just frantic friend making that yeah, doesn't okay. that doesn't settle, settle yeah, right okay. but if it went on i would say it might be normal for a joyful dog to greet a human maybe for a few minutes yeah right yeah um and maybe even be a bit rude about that, and that might be normal, right? Yeah. But if for twenty minutes it was doing it, yeah, then that that is abnormal to me. Yeah, okay. Um, if um, I I guess you know I from my histories I get a lot of a lot of uh, indications that they worry about noise. Yeah. Um. So that's always a a big red flag for okay. me. Um. So that would they, either be orientating towards the noise and barking, start yep, clatter, or, or leaving or, the noise. Yeah, or startling. Yeah. And sometimes very odd noises, like they don't like people sneezing. Yeah. Or they don't like a particular high pitched, you know, electronic noise. Yeah. Or, you know, so there's things that suggest it's a bit like the kid that doesn't like the label, right? Yeah. On their clothes, you know. Um, obviously, any compulsion okay you know if it's compulsive if it's spinning if it's looking at lights if it's uh chasing its tail if it's doing anything yeah, okay. like that i yeah. mean that's a definite 
mental illness, yeah, okay. right? That you training, yes, it's great to know what the triggers are and instigate a training program, but those dogs are mentally ill. Yeah, okay. So they definitely need the help of something to protect their brain. And when you're saying mentally ill, the brain's not normal. Yeah. The brain's not working properly. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. It's not in its ideal state. Yeah. And, and I mean, I crudely say that these dogs are the crackheads of the yeah. canine world, yeah. right? They are, they, their brains are, are over-seeking yeah. dopamine. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. So they, that, and, and whether it's come about from an original stress event, sometimes I find that, that in the history, often I see these dogs are very socially isolated. They're often outside a lot or yeah. they've been punished with, with collars and all sorts of things for barking. And then the behaviors begun. Or they have this genetic predisposition as well, right? So they could be of a certain breed, like a bull, bull terrier or something. But something has happened, and then we we have the brain kind of kind of go into a mode that makes it makes it feel better. Yeah. And that'll be the compulsion. Right. Okay. And then, of course, it becomes a welfare issue to stop the compulsion because the compulsion feels good. Yeah. But then it's stressful as well because... Well, actually, you're, you're becoming more and more unwell. Yeah. Because you need to do that more and more to feel normal. Yeah, okay. So, like, um, yeah. and it actually no longer has the same level of desire in it. It just needs to do it to feel normal. Yeah. And so... Just to see the drug addiction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, they're really... Okay. So do dopamine's <laughs> the hormone that gives us that makes us feel um, happy. Well, yeah, it gives if us what a buzz. It gives or... us the drive towards what we want. Um, yeah. It makes us kind of uh, yeah. There, there's it. There's a seek. There's a it, there's a seeking in it. Yeah. Like you, you're driven to do it. Once you have the thing, the dopamine's gone. Drops off. So with that there, if the earlier life events have been so punitive, it's basically because there's not been enough of the good stuff at the start, and mm. a dog's now similar yeah. to us. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, they, they, they definitely say that, you know, they're, I don't know, with humans and drug addicts, they say that, you know, yeah, internal uh, pain, don't yeah, they? Uh, and it's yeah. a... Yeah. Um, you know, this, yeah. this, 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 we'll try to find this, something. Yeah. This, yeah. this makes you feel better. And, um, you know, we all have certain levels of our own compulsion, don't yeah. we? Yeah. But some are going to be worse for you than others. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. A and I mean, I've had dogs that will, will spin for hours. Yeah you know, without stopping yeah. and, um, you know, they won't eat. Yeah. They won't lie down. They won't rest. They won't. Yeah. So okay. that's another, that's another thing actually rest, you know, yeah. we'll look at that. So yeah. a dog really needs 16 to 17 hours, 18, maybe sleep a day. I want you to repeat that for everybody. 16, 16 to, to 18, 18 hours of sleep a day. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's are, a lot. Yeah. And people are, when I, when I tell people that they are blown away. Mm. And so if you're permanently not getting enough yeah. sleep because you're so yeah. anxious and wired about your environment yeah. or because you're going to daycare five days a week yeah. or you're doing too much dog sport or yeah. <laughs> whatever the thing is that the people are doing, then, um, yeah, you yeah. may actually be not allowing your brain to yeah. recover. Either. So you basically, your, your tank's just not getting empty. That should be all right. Mm, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, no, I've got it on, but I've got the uh, thing on, so Cool. Uh, I just don't know, I just saw that that gone off, so... No, the audio's still running, so um, we can get that. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we're so basically... That, that's we're, really important, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's effectively been, you're, if you're not if you're sleep deprived, you're getting further, you start with a positive bank balance, mm. you just get more and more and more yeah, overdrawn so. over time, mm. because you're just, you're supposed to be getting... 16 hours a day and you're mm. getting 12 so you know got mm. a four hour deficit mm. the next day you've got an eight mm. hour the next mm. day you've got a 12 mm. hour mm. yeah and i mean they've shown of course with people you know you can you can literally kill someone with sleep yeah. deprivation yeah. um 
So it is really important. And dogs don't do as much um, REM sleep as we do. So they, you know, they really need to to get yeah. their their sleep so that they do get their REM yeah, sleep. Yeah, get the hours in. Yeah, cool. Mm. We could literally talk about this all day. <laughs> so we've been at it for how long? Forty minutes. Okay, is that right. enough? <laughs> yeah, that's great. No, well, it's, well, we could we could talk about it, but I'm conscious of taking your mm. time. So um, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, See, I. I could go on. Yeah, no, I'm exactly the same. I could sit and listen to you all day. I know. So that's been wonderful. Thanks mm. very much. It's been, um, yeah, we'll do it again next time I come yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah, good. Or we'll get yeah, a Skype I'm, session. I was done. very happy that you asked me to, I, I would have liked to have asked you to coffee or something, but I didn't want to, you know, sound like a Oh like God, a not crazy, at all. No, we'll, crazy. we'll grab a cup of tea just now. All right. So mm. wonderful. Thanks very much. I massively mm. appreciate it. Yeah. No, that's cool. Cool. Okay. Thanks guys.